This here is Subdivide, an overhead attack combat robot weighing in at just 150 grams. Hitting the top of an opponent with a hammer is a concept as old as fighting robots themselves, with notable robots like the Judge bringing large impacts down to do significant damage. The theory behind this is that the majority of robots focus on side attacks, so it's far easier to just run into a target than try to time a hit on a small area that does anything but stay still. Subsequently, most machines armor up in a sort of belt which leaves the top of the robot relatively unprotected. For a long time, top attack robots were simple hammers or saws, but that's begun to not be enough, especially in smaller robots. So the more modern approach mounts a spinning mass on the arm to store large amounts of energy to be delivered in the swing. A small disc can be spun up over the course of a few seconds, whereas the motor powering a hammer has a fraction of that to add energy to the system. The challenge here is having an actuator on the end of a fast moving arm that needs to survive combat conditions, but there are a few successful examples. A machine that immediately impressed me was Strike Point. The majority of overhead spinners are two wheel drive, which I am vehemently against, so seeing a four wheel drive robot outmaneuver and hammer opponents was what probably set me down this path. The design process was pretty quick as the machine is 80% my last 150 gram machine named Drive. Just needed to flip the lifter around and mount the weapon on it. The devil is in the details though, as simply extending the printed gear mount would result in fairly soggy hits. See, just throwing a spinning disc at the target isn't what leads to the most damage, as most of the energy gets unused as the disc just deflects away. What really makes an overhead spinner hit hard is its ability to bite in and deliver as much of the small weapon's energy as possible, requiring some fairly rigid system to keep the blade from bouncing off or moving away. As seen in this clip, the spinner sort of grabs and is pressed into the target between the arm and forks. The forks are an important part of this system as effectively acting as the base of the press and keeping the whole robot from bouncing away like some older hammer robots. So to keep the system as rigid as possible and stay within the 150 gram weight allowance, I specified a custom carbon fiber part. Carbon fiber is incredibly rigid for its weight, like nothing I've ever handled, and so it's perfect for this task. Milling the part out on my CNC machine is a challenge, as one cannot use standard milling end mills, as well as requiring extra preparation to keep me safe. In this picture, there are three end mills. The one on the right is a generic tool for metals, the center for aluminium, and the left is a cob cutter for composites like carbon fiber. Notice how it does not have curved cutting teeth like the others, but instead many small burrs sort of like a corn cob. This tool does not cut, but instead grinds away the material, as the carbon fibres themselves are very hard and abrasive, so don't like being cut. A feature of standard end mills are that they pull material up and out of the cut to eject chips from features. It wouldn't be much use if the material just stayed there after all. But this pulling motion can separate the carbon fibres within the epoxy, so another plus to the cob cutter. With the right tool selected, it's time to prepare the workpiece. As the cob cutter grinds away material, it becomes aerosolized, tiny, abrasive dust. This would eviscerate the inside of your lungs if you inhaled it, so in preparation I build a dam out of blue tack to flood with oil and reduce the amount of airborne particles. WD-40 is a good choice. Not trusting this completely, a proper, tight-fitting filter mask is worn, as well as sealing glasses to keep the particles out of my eyes. With that all sorted, some G-code can be generated and run on the machine to produce the part being sure to keep the dam full of oil during the cut. Some light filing is needed to remove the tabs, still wearing protective gear. Like the end mills, we need special files for the best results, but thankfully, small diamond grip files are cheap and common, thanks to drone enthusiasts needing them for adjusting carbon fiber drone frames. And with that, the part is finished and attached to the rest of the robot that magically appeared. And just in time for some fights. Quick tangent though, during some tests hits, which looked very nice in slow motion, after an impact, the weapon would bounce off the ground and start spinning in reverse. As the motor is sensorless, the ESC did not know that this had occurred, meaning in later matches after a good hit, the next one might have the disc spinning the wrong way, or it just makes a bad noise, as the ESC's commutation order is completely messed up. I'm not sure what to do about it, um, but there's no time to fix it. Subdivide's first test was against a tough robot made entirely out of TPU plastic named Deadline. Match starts with some good forkage as I attempt to pin and spin up the hammer. The, 
The last hit requires an unstick, but has punctured his lifter motor and disabled it. Unfortunately, it has also disabled my spinner, as the weapon motor unplugged, so the hammer spinner is now just a hammer. James has got no weapon now, so you can win this. Yeah, you got this. <laughs> As the fight closes, I get a lucky push, which pins Deadline against the wall. Nice first win for Subdivide. Second fight was Sawstorm, a sit and spin machine. I pinned them as quickly as possible and brought the hammer down three times. The last hit both propped them at an angle as well as hit their power switch, if I recall correctly, disabling their robot. Some pretty heavy damage was done to the chassis and another win for the hammer saw. Third fight was against Poker Face, which is another unique overhead attack robot. On top is a soldering iron mounted at a servo, which aims to melt through plastic top armor. Now this is a genuine concern, as to make weight, I followed the trend of putting all my armor into a belt around the robot, and only had one millimeter of polycarbonate covering the electronics and battery, which is not much. The obvious strategy here is to get in quick. <laughs> that last impact punctured Poker Face's top armour and pierced the battery, which let out the smoke. Clean third win for Subdivide. Smoke. Smoke. Final qualifier, we face off against Mr. Obvious, an angled bar spinner. Genuinely a good counter to overted attack robots, as the rigidly mounted weapon on their machine is much stronger than my relatively floppy arm, as well as preventing me from attacking anything on top of their robot. The strategy then is to hit a wheel or on their underside. My forks can get under their wedge without trouble, so much pushing ensued. Eventually they get flipped and pinned, at which point the drive taps out to avoid the underside hit which may have written off the machine and kept it from competing in the finals. Rank second, the quarterfinal is a rematch against Sawstorm, which would seem an easy fight, but subdivide met quite the resistance. By doing the spinny thing, the saw blade would catch the long forks and kept my robot from being able to pin, but that can only last so long. Oh, he's buried it! It's stuck. One unstick later, and I get a good rush and hit. Oh, he's got it pinned again. Switch, switch. Destroying the power switch again and disabling Sawstorm. Semi-finals was against Steel Storm, an egg beater robot that proved very effective at catching my forks. Unfortunately, its weapon caught and broke a weapon wire early on, but it proved to be a very entertaining fight nonetheless.
barely scraping by with the win, I replaced the weapon motor and beat the forks back into shape for the last match. The arm locked up for some reason, but I didn't have time to investigate. Finals time against the first seed robot Toss Boss, a tanky TPU machine with a carbon fibre nylon chassis and titanium lifting forks. The only real damage I could do would be an underside hit or taking out a wheel. Gyro. Whoa! That was a lot of sparks. How is my motor? Tell me where you bought that motor next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gone! Don't oh, buy you to tell the name. You jinxed it. Uh, so that's what not to buy. Yeah. To be fair, I think that was your fault. <laughs> yeah, I think all the, I think the, I think the winding was a fault out though. Let me think about that. When's the pit? <laughs> He's gonna play with that banana. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> a pretty intense driving battle, in the quick motor swap I would forgotten to add Loctite to the mounting bolts so the weapon motor vibrated loose and exploded. After another arm lock up I was pinned against the wall and counted out to earn second place. With the first event completed I had some things to improve. First was the arm locking up. I suspected it was over travelling forward and locking the gears. To test this I put a piece of plastic hot glued on the front of the arm and made it self right 50 times, which it did without failure. Second was those forks bending so easily. They need to be out of, made out of a stronger material than mild steel. Another was the weapon power cable disconnecting. More hot glue kind of fixed that. Finally, a wedge was a good idea if I ever fought any horizontals, which seemed like a fun thing to tackle first. A wedge for defense against horizontal spinners is something I've wanted since Derive. The plastic form is a very simple piece, but with a unique end mill specialized for it. One could use a generic end mill just fine, but these single tooth ones prove very effective to me. The single tooth allows lots of space for chips to be evacuated and avoid recutting, and compared to the aluminium variant it has extra grooves which apparently do something, I'm not exactly sure what, but it does good, a very good job of destroying plastics in a controlled manner. The polycarbonate stock is very thin so I can't go too hard on it, but the part is cut quickly nonetheless. First the small mounting holes are drilled to accommodate the aluminium blocks attaching it to the chassis. Then the end mill comes in to pocket the material and outline the contour. Tabs are chiselled and filed off. The wedge has folds in it to reduce the chance of a weapon catching the edge. I used a gas torch at a distance to heat the plastic and bend by hand. Turns out this makes it get pretty hot. To mount the wedge, some small aluminium blocks were decided upon. Tiny parts, so could be made from 6mm plate. Once the profiles were made, we bring out the vise. This holds parts for edge drilling to suit those mounting holes drilled in the polycarbonate. Drilled, tapped, and the wedge is done. Improved forks were made of titanium. I'll do a whole segment on machining this god awful material another time, but to give a little bit of detail, it is incredibly susceptible to heating up and hardening, which is generally immediately followed by your end mill turning into a glowing ball 
of superheated carbide. The results are otherwise quite nice, and the advantages are apparent in this photo. It's the same fork profile, and it's very similar weight, but the titanium part is twice the thickness. This will massively increase the bending strength of the part without affecting our weight budget, which is a great advantage of titanium here. With these upgrades, it's time for event number two for Subdivide, now upgraded and battle tested. First up was a big horizontal spinner named Shebang. Good thing I made that wedge. Unfortunately, I didn't test if it fit right, and it was lifting the front wheels off the ground. This first movement is my attempt to move in a straight line towards the opponent. After nudging their weapon free, it was just a matter of avoiding having my weapon wires sliced. nudging and the horizontal catches the edge of the wedge and throws me clean out of the arena. An unfortunate loss for subdivide, though pretty much undamaged. Second fight and the chance at redemption was Heat Saber. This machine was the evolution of the soldering iron robot from the last event, now with an aluminium spike that gets hot enough to melt through carbon fibre nylon. Good clean hits destroyed the board powering the soldering element and pulled some wires, but here is when I realised that Subdivide now drove really poorly. Looking at the wheels, it seemed the rubber had aged and cracked since the last event, and I had not brought spoiler tyres. Third was a rematch against Tosboss, who beat me in the finals last time. With improved reliability, I was keen to see if things would go differently. A win bringing the score to one all, I destroyed both the drive gear boxes and rode off the chassis as the side armour mounts were cracked. This is where I really realised how bad the driving problems were, as I was unable to properly steer the robot. Nonetheless, it was time to move on to 5-4. Last qualifier was another rematch against Mr Obvious. With my driving problems, this was a much harder match as I could not outrun their front end. Though when they were on my forks and the added adhesion offset my ruined tyres, it allowed a good push.
Not a single hammer swing in the fight, but a win is a win, and it's 3-1 onto the finals. Ranked first this time, the semi-final was a rematch against Heat Saber. Heat Saber was really feeling the pain of competition, and it lost a drive side without any engagements. One quick pin and hit was enough to knock it out for good. Finals is again Toss Boss. I found out later that this plastic spacer that keeps my spinner from hitting the ground at the rear had fallen out, so it was almost impossible to properly spin up the disc. But there wasn't much to do about that in the fight. Make sure he doesn't tamper his mind. He's like really in there. My God! This fight went to a crowd vote who voted 8 6 for Toss Boss, so second to it again. Subdivide had some fun in the Rumble to close off the event. Oh, 
An obvious thing to improve now is a permanent solution to keep the spinner from hitting the ground. Easiest is to add a nub to the lifter arm gear piece. May as well do one for the overextension as well. Cast polyurethane tyres are curing as I speak, so we'll not have traction problems ever again. In five days is the Melbourne 20th anniversary event, which I'll be attending with several robots, including Subdivide, Split and Scale, which have all received upgrades. There will most likely be a large summarising video for that event coming soon, as well as progress on the featherweight, so keep an eye out for that. Until next time.